morning, bonjour, bon dia, everybody. Uh, I'm at Shobden Airfield in Herefordshire, surrounded by beautiful aeroplanes, helicopters, micro lights, it's wonderful. And I just wanted to talk to you about the first impressions of the motor gut sea that I've now had about 10 days, so I'm still running it in. The um, reason I chose the motor gutsy is because I prefer the look of traditional bikes, retro bikes, and this is a genuine retro bike. This engine was designed in something like 1965. It's obviously been modified and brought up to date. The other reason I bought it is I like the ease of maintenance. It's air-cooled and it's got its overhead valve with push rods, so it's actually easy to do the valves. Whereas if you take a Japanese bike like my last Kawasaki, I had to undo nearly 40 fastenings just to get to the air filter. On this, it's four screws and take the seat off. Start from the front of the bike. Mud guards are plastic. Uh, I chose the version, the stone version, which has got the alloy wheels, which I think are easier to live with than spokes. It's got a Brembo disc. The, brake, the brakes are adequate for the bike. It's not a sports bike, so they're absolutely adequate, but not as probably good as my uh, Kawasaki. The frame is very traditional. Uh, it's shaft driven. We have a look at the shaft. So no more rubby fingers. Twin exhausts. Comfortable. It's got a nice seat. I would say on the Kawasaki, I'd be sitting on it about an hour and I'd have a number. On this, it's minimum two hours and I'm, I'm st still pretty good. I like the tank as well. The fuel tank holds 22 litres. Uh, with doing about 65 to the gallon, I think I can get about 250 miles from a tank. Things I don't like about it, I don't understand why they set the clock off centre. The Bonneville is central, I think this should be central as well, but I'm not sure if that's going back to a, a previous model where it was offset. With the instrument itself, there's no fuel gauge. It's not a showstopper. There is actually a light that comes on when you're down to the last couple of gallons, but there's no fuel gauge, which is a bit silly this day and age, but it's easy enough to work out from your average fuel consumption when you're gonna run out. Um, when the emergency light came on, or the emergency, the reserve light came on, and I filled up, I still estimate it's got two gallons in there, which should give me 100 miles on the reserve. The engine is characterful, as they keep saying. I love it. When you start it, you can really, the thing sort of throbs. It's like getting on a steam train after an electric train. I really like that side of things. The gear indicator, this is another, um, I think it's probably because it's a mechanical linkage, my friend Mike seems to think. When you change gears, say from first to second, second to third, the digital counter doesn't change till about a second afterwards again. But I know what gear I'm in, so it's, it's not an important thing, really. Um, the other thing I've noticed since I've had it, it's sat in black and it picks up the dirt incredibly easily. Any Go through a puddle and you've got to wash the bike every time you go out. In terms of handling, I find it more than adequate. It can certainly outhandle me around the bends. Um, when I've been too up on it, I did manage to ground the foot peg yesterday, but that was on quite a tight bend. And um, I've got a bruise on my ribs where my wife punched me as well, but I didn't think I was going that quick. Um, I've never grounded it on my own, but with two up, I guess it was a little bit, uh, the suspension was a little bit lower. It's got Michelin tires as standard, Michelin road classics. It's a 900 mile running in period, so I, sh I should be booking it in probably tomorrow now. Um, 900 miles is a fair way, but it gives me, I would think it would give me about 70 mile an hour, 75 mile an hour top speed during the running in, but it's 900 miles. So on the first service, the oil, the oil's going to be changed and also the valve clearance is checked. That would be a big deal on most overhead cam bikes, but because this is overhead valve, it's actually quite an easy job. I'm not a mechanic and I reckon I could do the valves on this in under an hour. So hopefully that wouldn't put the price too much. I haven't had the price yet, so I'm going to ring the dealer to find out. But overall, so far, I'm really, really pleased with it. Um, I'm going to make some additions to it. I've got these throw over panniers, but I'm going to put a rack on it. So when I'm going on a long trip, I can put my top box on it as well. I'm going to leave the top box off ordinarily because it ruins the look of it. Lights are LED. One of the things I quite like, let me come around the front there, Mike. The daytime running lamp is actually shaped like the Moto Guzzi Eagle. Right. <laughs>
Yeah. That's the daytime running light. Dip beam, high beam. But I wanted to say a little bit of a, the history of motor Guzzi. It's quite interesting. It's back in World War One. There were three Italian lads served in the military arm of the Italian Navy. There was Carlo, who was an engineer, uh, Giorgio, whose family were very wealthy, and uh, Giovanni, who was a motorbike racer. And they were from very different backgrounds, and they became firm friends, and they had a dream of building motorbikes at the end of the war. But sadly, Giovanni was killed in a plane crash. He was a pilot. And in his honour, the logo of Motor Guzzi is the eagle, which is, I guess you'd call it, the regimental emblem of the equivalent of the Italian fleet air arm in tribute to Giovanni. So Carlo Guzzi was the engineer who put the bikes together. So I've called the, the bike Carlo in, name, in, uh, in, in honour of uh, Carlo Guzzi. And it is pronounced Guzzi, not Guzzi. It's Italian at the end of the day. You don't see pizza, do you? You say pizza. So there you are guys. So I've had the bike say 10 days now and I'll do another video in a few months time when I put a few thousand miles on it. So ta-da for now. See you next time.